Okay, hey guys, uh, welcome to data science week number seven. So we'll be going over functions today and also graphs, which is kind of cool. So um, I'm gonna talk about the difference between math functions and coding functions. You know, if you guys are all in middle school, some of you guys have learned about functions in math. So in math, there are X and Y values, okay? Math is like completely numerical, right? You know, usually other than the variable itself, there's no letters or anything, but the variables itself only contain numerical values, right? Um, y is an output value and X is the input value. Remember at the beginning of the semester, or sorry, uh, at the course, we learned independent and dependent variables. The X variable is the independent variable and the Y variable is a dependent variable. So every X value can only be assigned to one Y value, okay guys? So, um, and Y values can be assigned to multiple X values though. So. A function in math also must pass the vertical line test. Um, some examples of functions include y equals x plus two and y equals x squared. Um, x, x squared. So I'll show some examples of this quickly. So y equals x plus two. You guys see this? Every point, right? Every point here only has one uh, y value for each x value. Look at that. You guys see that? No matter how small the value gets, there's only one value, one x value for every y value, right? Let's try another function. Now you guys see this one? Yeah, it's a little bit different, but it's, yeah, but you can see there's only one y value for every x value. Now, if I try something like this though, look at this, x squared plus y squared equals 25. This is not a function, you know why? There's this thing called the vertical line test, okay? So let me like annotate my screen if possible. Um, draw, okay, there we go. Let's see, let's see if this works. Vertical line test, you guys see, if this vertical line passes through more than one point, that means it's not a function, okay? But let's see. Um, so let me, let me clear that drawing quickly and let me stop annotating for a second. But if I try x squared now, and I annotate this, you guys see no matter where I put the line through, it's only gonna pass through once. That's why it's a function, okay? You guys see that? Okay, I hope you do. It's, it's not too bad, guys. It's not anything too complicated, so yeah. All, all Basically what a function is, it only has to pass the vertical line test. That's all a function is. So yeah, oh, wait, I have to clear my drawings one second. Clear all drawings, okay, there we go. Okay, let's go back to the thing. And this is much different than what functions are in coding. Functions in coding can take multiple types of inputs. They don't even have to be numerical. These could be categorical. Um, they can also return multiple values. In math, you saw only one value value can be returned, right? In coding, multiple things can be returned. Functions and coding to a certain task. Like let's say, um, let's say you had a function called um, eat, right? Um, and when you when you put this function, it would like. Um, actually, that's a bad example. Let me think of one more. There's so many functions. Let's just say you had a function called add numbers, right? All it does is it'll add numbers for you. It'll do the sum. Okay. Um, let's say you had a function called uh, uh, drive, okay? So when you pass through a certain stoplight, you can give a certain value and it'll add that many miles per an hour to the existing value. Like let's say it's a 40 mile per an hour zone. If you're driving 20, it'll say add another 20. Like it does certain tasks for us basically. And you can use either categorical or numerical variables and you can even return both. Um, functions don't even have to return some uh, anything. You know, they like unlike math functions in math, functions coding, you don't even have to return anything. And some examples include the add and average functions from Java. I didn't want to use those ones earlier, but yeah. And then we have two keywords that we have to use for functions, and that's def and return. So I'll show you guys that in the Google Cloud Notebook. So we'll try making a empty one, right? So um let me write it first. So I'm going to make a function that adds three numbers together and takes the average of those three numbers. So I'll say add um, underscore then 
Oh, I think I caps lock. Then average. Right. Okay. And then I'm going to take num1, num2, and then num3. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new variable called num num4. Or I'll make it total, actually. Total is better. Equals num1 plus num2 plus num3. Right. Now what I want to do is I want to take the average, right? So I'm going to say return total divided by 3. Okay. So if you run this, nothing's actually going to print, by the way. But look at this. Add underscore then underscore average. And let's say I put one, two, three. Look at this. Look what's going to happen. You guys see that? Like all you have to do is this line and it printed the like what, what exactly you wanted it to print. So what happens when you're calling this, right? You're calling this add an average function. You're passing these per these are I think these are called arguments. Um so when you pass in these arguments, right? It goes to this function over here, add then average. And it says num1 is equal to one, num2 is equal to two, and num3 is equal to three, right? And it goes into the function. It says total equals num1 plus num2 plus num3. And this return, what it does is it returns the final value. So let me explain the two keywords and the syntax. So this def is very important. That's how you define a function. This colon, you need it. Whenever you're defining function, it's it's much similar to a for loop. Like you guys remember with for loops, how we had to do like for um, i in x, and then you had to put for like colon. It's very similar, right? So something like that. And then you have to have this indent. Right after you create a function, you always have to have an indent for all the lines in your code, okay? Uh, and return just returns the value. That's it. That's all it does. So whatever value you want it to print, that's what it's going to return. So yeah, um, that's pretty much functions in a nutshell. Um, so let me see if there was any other examples. Yeah, there wasn't any other examples. I'll just go to graphs. So um, I'm sure you'll all remember graphing bar plots and line plots. We did that before, right? Um, but the surprising thing is I actually made these two line plots or sorry, these two graphs on Google Cloud itself, which is kind of weird. You're only expecting like numbers and words to come on this. You would never expect like a graph or a picture, right? In coding, but that's the cool part of Google Cloud and data science. So you can graph both bar plots and line plots. And um, usually a bar plot has some type of categorical variable here on the X axis. And on the y variable, it's some dependent variable, usually a numerical variable. Sometimes same with the line plot, but line plot also has time as the x-axis sometimes. So yeah, um, but we'll be exploring more into that a little bit later. But uh, let's go over the graphing and aesthetic components of graphing. So Seaborn is a library for making statistical graphics in Python, builds on top of matplotlib and creates closely with pandas data structures. So Seaborn helps you explore and understand your data, basically. Um, and like we said, remember, this is a library. It's a package. And when you download this type of code, you can use it. It's code made by someone else, right? You don't have to write the code. Someone else made this code for you to use. So um, these are all things that were all included um, when this person made this package. We don't know who it is, obviously, but they made the package. So yeah. Um, so let's get started. But we need some. We need like a data set for this. So I'm going to go get it from the Google Classroom, actually. I believe I posted this a couple of weeks ago. So let's see if it's still there. Um, I think I said to copy this one first. So let's do that. And then I said to copy this one second, right? So let's copy that. Code. So let's run this. And then let's run this. Okay. Yeah, I think this is the correct thing. Hopefully. Yeah, this is the correct stuff. So let's start the graphing. So let's follow the presentation as well. Okay, there we go. Okay. So graphs are also like variables, much like data frames. So graph. Let's say graph one, uh, graph one equals, okay, that's an s dot line plot. 
And now, what do we call our data set? We called it DF, like, like we usually do. So we have to assign the data to something. So data equals DF, okay? And what do you want on your X, X axis, right? That's, that's what we want. Like, um, let's say we want product name, okay? So let's do that. Actually, there's too many, too many um, rows here. Let's shorten it up a little bit. I'm gonna make a new data frame called uh, DF2, and I'm gonna only use the first five rows. I'm gonna use the head function. So I'm gonna make the data equal to DF2. So product name, I'm gonna make X equal product name. You have to follow the exact same syntax as above. And then you'll say y equals price. Now let's see if this runs. Yeah, you guys see that line plot though? Like it printed everything you want needed to print. So it printed computer, tablet, printer, phone, and speaker. You guys see that? And it printed the prices. Uh, and now we'll go over some of the aesthetic components. So um, this is actually not necessary, but you can put color as well. You can change the color of the line. Let's say you wanted to make it yellow. I'm just doing this so it's obvious. I made a change. It doesn't look good, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change it back to something better, like red. Yeah, red looks decent. Yeah. So you guys see that you can put color there. That's an aesthetic component. But to do a graph, you need the, whatever I've highlighted. That's the part you need. Like you need that. You don't need color, but you need all of this to make a graph. Um, and let me go over some of the aesthetic components now. So obviously you want a graph, but you also want labels for things, right? So what you're gonna do is, um, what are you gonna do? Let's see. I believe you can do graph one dot set underscore style. I don't use this set style that much, um, but let's see if it works. Oh, my bad, my bad. My bad, my bad. Let's see. Yeah, SNS. So basically what this does is it gives you different styles um, for your graph. So white grid doesn't actually do that much in this situation. You see dark grid changed up the graph a little bit. Um, you could just make it dark. See dark made a big difference. Um, I think there's even white. And there's one called ticks, I think. I usually use ticks actually, but I like the dark grid one. So I'm gonna use that one. Oh, it didn't change. Oh, that's weird. Oh, my bad. It was dark. Yeah, dark. I'm gonna use dark. I like this one. Yeah. And you can also set the labels itself. So I think you have to use graph1.set. Uh, I think it's X label, I believe. Yeah, X label. So let's make it product name. And then we're gonna do graph one. Oh, let's see if that works first. Yeah, that worked. So graph one dot set y label. So it'll the, the y axis will be labeled now. So we'll say price of product. And then we also have to have a title, obviously, right? So graph one dot set underscore title, and it's gonna be um, let's say price by product. I think that's good. Now, if you do all of this, look at this. Price by product, product name, price of product. Everything came together like we needed it to. So yeah, all the aesthetic components are covered there. Um, and now you might be thinking, oh, like if you have to do this entire thing just for a bar plot or a line plot, right? And let's say I wanted to make a bar plot all I have to do is change this from line plot to bar plot. That's it. And you guys see that? It's completely different now. Now, if I change it back to line plot, it'll give me just line plot. So there's, you know, just that one word over here makes a big difference. And this might seem like a lot, but all of this is not necessary. Even this color part is not necessary. Only thing you really need for this graph is one line of code. That's it which is kind of impressive, right guys? So yeah, um, let's see if there's anything else. I think I'm gonna teach this one in the next lesson anyway. So I think that's, that's this week, yeah. I'll see you guys in week number eight.